of fun. This is a topic that I said this yesterday. This is this is my thing. I just get super excited with this. Today we're talking about orchestration and synchestration. Orchestration using sample libraries, basically. Yeah. Orchestral mockups. Symphonic virtual orchestration. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be great. It could be better though, because today we're still not composing. Um, so it's a little bit of a bummer, but <laughs> today we're going to be talking about very basic concepts of orchestration and synchestration, but mostly orchestration. Very fundamental concepts of orchestration. They're so simple that sometimes we forget, but it's still super powerful. All right, we'll talk about how to separate the different layers, how to balance, how to all these things um, are very fundamental things that are similar to what we learned yesterday, music theory and harmony, all these things, right? Uh, that's what we're gonna be covering today. Before we dive in, I'm gonna explain, I'm gonna repeat some of the things that I've been repeating for the first week, in case that some of you, maybe this is the actual first class that you are watching, go watch the other classes. Actually, go watch them. Don't watch this one. I'm waiting for you to leave. This is not the first class. We did a few classes. Oh, too simple. All right, just kidding. Um, for sure, stay here and watch this class. But we did three other classes, fantastic classes on, you know, configuring your workspace, your DW, your template, so it's actually efficient. And so it allows you to compose files. And we talked about music theory and harmony, telling a story with harmony. Today we're talking about orchestration. But just recap, um, at the beginning of this video, I've explained these things. I'm going to explain them again. Um, we're having classes every day for the next, this week and the next three weeks. These classes are not live. We pre-recorded these a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the reason why these classes are pre-recorded is because we have edited them so they are as clear and to the point as possible. All right, we are still live. We are live here in the chat. So if you get any question, ask the question. We will answer that question there or we will point you to the right direction, right? We know the content that you've got. And if you've got a specific question that we've already covered in a, in a video that's in one of the courses that you have access to, we'll give you access, we'll let you know where to watch that video. Also, and today is most important than any other day, tomorrow we are having a Q&A live call. And it's gonna be with Tony, Alex, and myself, all right? So today we're gonna be live on Zoom. So join, it's gonna be a lot of fun, all right? But that's pretty much it. We're, we're having classes during the morning and then kind of like around noon or before noon, we're having the master classes. The classes are happening every day. Monday to Thursday in this kind of format and Friday is the Q&A format. And then the master classes are happening kind of like around noon or a little bit before noon, but not every day. Check the calendar to know the exact dates and times for the master classes. Attend those as well. We are bringing Hollywood composers and people that I admire very much so you can learn from them. It's gonna be awesome. You can, those classes, some of them, same concept. Some of them are pre-recorded because of time availability for from those people. And some others are live. We will let you know which ones are what. So the live ones, you'll be able to interact with them. The pre-recorded ones are kind of like this format. All right. Long enough intro, let's dive in. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Orchestration and synchestration. Counterpoint is a tool that we will use so when, so when we've got two melodic lines going at the same time, we make sure that there is not, uh, there is not the type of conflict that we don't desire for that specific style. But the, the the classical counterpoint rules will not apply for all the styles. All right. So, so let's talk about separation first. Let's let's talk about how to create separation. All right. So, the when we've got two, so the music music can be just one idea, one musical idea, or we can have more than one musical idea going on at the same time. Right. Um, we can have melody and background. We can have a melody, a country melody. We can, we can have one layer, two layers, three layers, four layers, five layers, right? The thing that, the thing to take into consideration is that as human beings in general, unless we focus all our attention in, in that specific task, like if we are analyzing on a score and we are, we are putting all our attention in that, we may be able to to understand what's going on musically, to, to see the three or four layers at the same time. But usually, human being 
is like this. It's one, two, many. That's basically right. basically what we what we are able to. If we have if we are listening to someone, and there's someone that's talking. If if we pay very very close attention, we we could we could understand the two conversations. We we could understand what each one of these person is saying if they both are speaking at the same time to us. But more than two, it's gonna be many. So it's gonna be you know just. So musically speaking, it's gonna be the same. You know, one idea, two ideas, many. One, two, three, many. Uh, max one, two, three, four, four ideas. You being able to, you know, to pay attention to four musical ideas going at the same time, it's gonna be impossible. It's gonna be like one, two, many, or one, two, three, many, right? So, in order for, but 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 we as the listener will be able to focus our attention in one of these ideas, unless there is some sort of musical conflict that's making it. That's gonna be that's gonna be making it not easy to understand what 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 what's going on musically. All right. So ways to avoid uh, ways to create separation or association because in some cases we do want two instruments or two sections to be doing the same thing and we want the listener to associate like it's. it's it's this one thing, yes, it's, a, it's an ensemble of instruments doing the same thing, but it's all these people are doing this, let's say melody, and all these sections are doing that background or counter melody, okay. So, ways to create separation or association. Um, the less, so I'm gonna describe each one of these, okay. Now, the less elements in common, the more separation, and the more elements in common, the, the less separation, okay? Ah, so, here's the, the main ones, the, the, the ones that are, going, that are going to create more separation or association, these are the secondary ones, and here's the other, other ones that we'll talk about, it's more, more, it has to be more into production, micing and all that, but let's start with this one. So rhythm, rhythm, um, that this is the, the one that's going to create more separation between two musical layers. If we've got one musical layer that rhythmically is doing something and another one that's rhythmically is doing another thing, it's going to be super easy to separate, even if they are in a, in a similar register, in a similar range, right? If we've got one instrument doing and the other is doing right, it's two different rhythms, clearly. Um, there's so there's more elements that came into place here too for us to be able to to see these two things. But even if they were in the same, right, two different rhythms. Um, and if if we, this clearly is melody and background. But if we had something like. Well, this is still a little bit of melody, but so this this would be the closest that you can get. It's very close register. It's not like melody and background. Um, it's two rhythmic ideas, and we can separate them because it's a different rhythm. Okay, different register. Not much to say, but it's the same thing. Easier to separate these two ideas than this one, these two. Right. Similar register, uh, more association and less separation. Timbre and color. If we had this and then we have a noble, let me see if I can do this real quick. So this is a piano. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have the strings. It's gonna be super, super obvious, but but you get the idea. Right, super easy. Two timbers. It's gonna make it easier for us as a listener to differentiate to to uh, the uh, to separate these two ideas. So different timbre, different color is gonna create separation. In terms of a uh, 
dynamics, if we've got something that is piano and something that's forte, it's going to be very easy to separate these two ideas. Um, line, um, line direction, so we've got something that's going, go, so it's going like this. So same rhythm, very similar uh, register, same color, same chamber, um, same dynamics, but still because direction is just slightly, it's, it's completely different, then it's easy to separate these two ideas. Um, now articulation. So imagine that we had the same rhythm, same register, the same everything. Like if we had this, like I'm gonna do this. Um, if we these are these are staccato short notes. If we had the strings doing another group of strings doing long notes or like sforzato or tenuto or type of type of articulation, then we would get it would be easy to separate these two ideas, even though they are doing the very same thing. Um, there's a, if like if we've got uh, the double basses section DBC, like the, the double basses section, that's maybe six or eight double basses if it's a big section, and we let's, let's say that we've got eight, it's a big section, and we've got four of them pizzicato and four of them regular arco. So um, if they are performing this one note, boom, boom, four of them are just doing pizzicato and the, the rest of them are doing arco. Um, at the end of the day, it's one idea, it's one layer, but it would be easier for us to separate like the four double bases and the other four double bases than if they all were doing pizzicato, which would make them sound more like a one section thing. Okay. All right. So that's that articulation. Like, um, but at the, but at the end, this this usually is going to be another thing that we put that we that with other with some other of these elements are going to help creating separation or association if we're using the exact same art articulation. So now if we've got if we've got this, which is what the, the first example that I that I gave with the piano. Right? We've got not just a different we, we've got not just a different a different rhythm, different register. Um, it's also different articulation. It's going to be short notes. Even if this was forte and this was soft, which you know it would be counterintuitive. You know this would be what you, you would never do this, but still because of different register, different rhythm, and different. Uh, um, articulation you still can sort of how guess the guess or hear the melody and see what the melody is doing all right because we're creating separation by using all these elements all right so finally we've got panning and depth this is more like a, in the production side of things but um, so in um, in uh, music is sound right at the end of the day um, when we are dealing with an orchestra Usually, um, if we use most of the libraries, the sample library, let's talk about sample libraries. If we are dealing with an orchestra, then because the, because the orchestra it already is a big instrument, there are instruments that are closer to the mics or closer to the conductor, and there are instruments that are farther away. So if we were the conductor and we closed our eyes, the, the, uh, our eyes, and uh, we got the orchestra to teach, we could hear the strings closer to us, right? And the trumpets and brass section will be farther away, and then the percussion section is going to be farther away. The horns are farther away as well, right? Sort of like woodwinds are in the middle, sort of thing, right? And so if we, if we close the eyes, we can sonically we can sonically guess where, you know, we can, so we can see the sonic picture of the orchestra. And I'm talking about the orchestra because the, because the orchestra is a big instrument. It's like, it's like, it's a lot of people. So if we, you see the orchestra as one instrument, as a one sonic, like, sonically one mass of people that produces sound, because there's a lot of people, you have to place them, right? Because we, you, you can have them all producing the sound from this one same spot. And so they will, be, they will be using two different spaces, close to far, so depth, and then left to right, 
which is panning at the end of the day. So if we've got two instruments or two sections that are in the same depth position and in the same panning position, let's say we're talking about violins, violins one and two, which sort they are sort of in the same position even though the violins two are closer to the center. So let's say that we've got the violins one and two section and they're performing a melody in octaves maybe, or a melody in unison. It's going to be hard to differentiate what part of that sound is violins one and what part of that sound is violins two. Um, now, if we've had if we had the same thing, the exact same thing, and we have we have the entire violins one and two section performing a melody, and then we've got the trumpets, the trumpets, because they sit farther away, they have a different timbre. But let's say. Let, let's do this differently. Let's say that we go for a non-traditional position and we have the violins one and we decide to place them over the left and then violins two the other way, just in the, in the, in the exact opposite side, which is non-traditional but it's, it's common. So we have violins one here, violins two here, and then we've got cellos, violas, and double basses sort of like next to the cellos. Uh, so it's gonna be easier, even if they are performing the exact same melody in unison, it's gonna be easier to differentiate violins one and violins two, because we chose a different space, we placed them in a different space, in this case panning, right? If we had, if we had, um, if, if we are now composing, right? And we've got, let's see what we've got here. What do we have? Um, Let me just grab the violin gear. Ah, so let's say that I've got, let me just get rid of this. So this violin is one and two um, uh, legato and it's they sound, if you close your eyes you can, you can imagine that you're the conductor and you can see them there uh, over the left a little bit they're not very, very far away. So I'm just going to record three notes. Ah, so you can hear this sonic element. Okay. Now, if I used another one, this is violins, uh, staccato, but I'm, I'm going to make them long notes. Okay, I just key switched it. So let me just... So this is staccato. I'm gonna make this just, just so you know this 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 one at the moment is gonna be let's copy um, violins one and two one and two legato. Just change the key switch so I made it. So this this and this should be the same. All right. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm am going to add a lot of reverb. So it's gonna be I'm gonna use this epic reverb which is um, B two. Uh, uh, random, random cathedral patch uh, and I'm gonna make it pre-fader, I'm gonna activate it, so what, what means is that even, even if I even if I bring down the volume of this patch because I'm sending, I'm still sending to the reverb, the reverb receives the signal from this patch and uh, it's gonna sound super super wet, which which is gonna make it appear. It's gonna make it sound like if they were farther away. Okay, so I don't remember what what I recorded. All right, so I I'll just do the same. So you can. Not clearly, but you can, if you pay close attention, you can hear is the same timbre, is the same articulation, is the same register, is the same notes, is the same everything, the same octave. Um, but one of them are it's closer, and another one it's far drew away. Uh, and so that helps us creating a little bit of separation. Now there are some elements that create more separation than others. This is not one of the. This is not, and here's. This, this is not one of the elements that creates more separation. And this is and this is the one that we focus the most, right? When we are producing 
it's like I need to learn about all these things about the libraries and orchestral mocha production because then it's gonna make my music sound better and that's that's BS really that's what's gonna make your music sound better is music is arrangement is orchestration is orchestration is you know it's it's a good composition it's a good orchestration it's you know it's it's you you know reading the scores and uh, and modeling what works and copying what the masters do and then you know making that a part of your tool set and then adding your own things and creating your own voice that's what's going to make your music sound good not choosing the right reverb not placing the instruments correctly yes it's important but it's just like the 10 20% of the sound you know 80% of the if of your of the sound of the you know up track sounding good is um, a good arrangement a good orchestration a good composition it just it's easier to sell the idea of you know the, the idea of orchestral mocha production when we talk about plugins and samples and reverbs and mixing and mastering it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sexier concept to sell when when um, and you're like, ah, my music doesn't like my mock, my orchestral mock doesn't sound like I would like it to sound. And I've seen other mock-ups sounding so much better. It must be that I'm not good at mixing. It, it's not that. It's not that. It, maybe you're not good at synchestration. Maybe you're a good orchestrator, but you don't know how to use your libraries to make them sound like a real orchestra. There's a process. Uh, but again, see that the the difference on the separation the separation so even if we are like i'm gonna create a separation by having this instrument closer here and this other instrument closer closer there if you didn't do any of these it's gonna be very hard the effect is gonna be minor compared to all these musical things that we can do right okay cool so hopefully that makes sense um so this is that let's just give it one one more pass and the zoom this is gonna sound awful but but anyway There's one that sounds closer. I'm gonna have this a little recorded again and I'm gonna record it softer in like lower in volume. If I went a little bit farther and I, oops, let me do this. So if I went a little bit farther and I moved this, now it's, it's post fader. If I moved this one. to the other side. Now you can, um, there's more separation. All right, cool. So that's that. So less elements in common, more separation, more elements in common, less separation. Okay, let me know if there's any question. Boom, 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 boom on YouTube, all right, well, all right, so doubling. Um, now, in an orchestral context, sometimes we will put instruments together, right? So let's see, like, best practices to how, because sometimes it's like, ah, uh, the low instrument, should I have a double basses or should I have double basses and, and tuba and bassoon or trombones as well, bass trombone, timbasso, what, when, where, and, and why, all right? So let's talk about this real quick. My recommendation is to group the instruments by color, not range. So for example, um, and, um, and I'll explain color exactly, but um, so believe it or not, the cello and the bassoon, they have a, a similar color and they work very well together. Uh, other examples, string pizzicato and arp. Um, double reeds like the oboes, 
a MIDI trumpet somehow a similar color so it's easy to it's easy to to put them together and work as a one musical idea all right easy tip uh, I like using uh, how did it go let me just find it for you um, I like using well I used it more often I don't use it that much these days because I because it's but uh, Vienna Vienna symphonic like they've got Vienna let me BSL or just try illustration illustration um, no 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 Ah, uh, how do you call it? Uh, Come links. There you go. Sound combination. Ah, that's how they call it. Sound combinations. So for inspiration, for ideas, you may wanna you may wanna go here, um, and um, and um, so they've got this right, and you go here instrumentology. This is how they call it. Instrumentology. That's nice. Okay. And so you can go, let's say, woodwinds um, or percussion or strings. Let's start with woodwinds. Start with woodwinds. So you've got all these. You've got flutes, blah, 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 blah. Let's say that we choose the English horn, okay? Not the English horn, the oboe. Let's go with the oboe. And then for percussion, we're going to choose timpani. It takes a little bit too low. Timpani. And for a string, we're going to choose viola. Just for examples. Um, and then oboe, well, history, notation, range, and all that. And then sound combinations. So I'll do the same thing with the timpani if it lows. It's my. It's really slow today. So, sound combination is still loading. Sound combination for a timpani. And sound combinations for the viola. Come on, this one went faster. All right, so the viola sound combination it gives you um, it gives you ideas, examples, and it explains you the why's and what things you can do. So, for example, viola plus strings orchestra. This is the obvious choice, right? So, sorry, viola plus viola, blah blah blah. It's gonna, you know, the, the sound of the violas as a group achieves, you know, a charm. Right? Viola plus violin, viola plus cello. Viola plus double bass. So this is like the obvious, right? But viola plus harp. You know, the strings pizzicato blends well with the harp. Pizzicato is often used as a harp. Just, all right, cool. Now viola plus what, uh, woodwinds. Viola and oboe. Uh, the high notes, A string. So the viola strings are these. Uh, so the C, G, D. This doesn't sound because this is a um, uh, violin spot that I'm, that I'm going to load it at the moment. But these are the, the strings of the viola. The first one is a C, the second one is a G, the third one is a D, and the last one is an A, right? So, sorry, let me just mute this. So, the, um, the, it says the high notes, the A strings, are to a certain extent related in chamber to the oboe. Nice. So, maybe with the higher register of the viola with the oboe it can be a good combination. And it just gives you an idea uh, maybe they didn't, that maybe you didn't th think about. So viola plus, plus brass, so viola and trumpet, viola horn, and all that. Okay. Let's let's see the the oboe. So oboe plus flute, oboe plus clarinet, oboe plus bassoon, and it explains you. So the oboe plus bassoon, this this works really really well because they are both double reeds, and the the bassoon is sort of like the lower octave of the of the oboe or two octaves below, and. And having in, in between the bassoon and the oboe, it's the English horn, right? So we've got oboe, English horn, bassoon, and contrabassoon. Sort of like they blend very well together. Uh, if that's what we if that's what we are trying to create, if we are trying to create association, we are trying to create a more homophonic type of um, type of sound. If we are trying to create a more heterogeneous type of sound, if we want separation, if we want to hear the different woodwind instruments, then we we can have um, an oboe and clarinet, two very different sounds. Oboe and flute, two very different sounds. Oboe, clarinet, and flute, three very different sounds that creates that heterogeneous type of sound. Oboe, oboe and trumpet is a very is a very classical one, um, and they work very very well together. Adding a little bit of definition, the oboe adds definition to the trumpet, but it mellows the sound a tiny bit, just a tiny bit. So so all these things you'll find them here. Um, 
like if you can think like if you're like well what about the timpani this, the timpani is a timpani you can combine the timpani with well timpani plus trumpets tr timpani plus horns like like you know pa -pa -pa -pam type of thing and do the trumpet you may think like the pa -pa -pa -pam trumpets are like pa -pa -pa -pam brass adding the timpani um, adds that you know support and creates a little bit of definition for that for that rhythm timpani was trombone trombone super super typical timpani and tuba um, some parts of the tuba timbre blah, blah blah so timpani and woods and all that it gives you examples and then timpani and arp timpani and double bass pizzicato maybe there you go double bass pizzicato an octave below gives the timpani additional resonance that's that's golden that's great you know so, so that's i i like this um very very much all right so is it deep um how do they call it instrumentology or sound combinations uh, so bsl sound combinations there are other places where you can find these obviously the, the orchestration books and all that but if you want like a easy quick access all right so let me know if there's any questions so far can i get the yeah yeah thanks for sharing michael and um so now um other doubling op options so because you at this point you might be thinking like i either go there and i've got all the options uh, or i still don't have a clear idea how to how to combine different instruments because yes group by color is nice but what do you mean group by color like what i i don't know what instruments have a similar timbre similar color i didn't i didn't think about you know double reeds and muted trumpet like so sometimes this helps um taking a, a decision on what instruments to put together and i, I sometimes recommend just, just create an excel spreadsheet and uh, and have your pre-made combinations like think before like a structure you know the similar structure like brass built instruments right or idiophones like you know um just but maybe if, if, if you for example google instruments by type right and you'll have uh the idiophones member phones and all this like the idiophones being like something like the marimba the wood blocks the xylophone right the member phones well the like this nurse the timpani all these instruments that have a membrane um brass built instruments so as it's, an, it's another way of organizing instruments right so for example the brass section all the brass section is brass built instruments right but also the tubular bells or the cymbal or the tam tam or the piatti those are brass built instruments so they because because the materials because the structure um, they are going to work well together so they are gonna somehow have a similar timbre it's harder to think like the double reed oboe let's say and the muted trumpet it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna share some timbrical um, you know it's gonna sound similar but if you just think about okay so the let's so let's, let's say wood instruments all right so clarinet and viola somehow they have they have to vibrate similar right or um you know the um like plucked uh or well let's talk about the, the, the next one because this this makes sense uh waveform decay type right so le, let's say fa, um, like like fixed type of decay and controlled type of decay so there are some instruments like the the strings that you can control the decay because you can perform a note and then you can decide how long it's gonna that's a control type of decay let's but then there are others like the piano that once you press the note it's got a long decay yes but you can't do anything else with it so and within those there are some that will have a faster decay time and some others that will have a longer decay time right so for example um, fast decay time could be for example staccato piano notes pizzicato like string pizzicato and arp somehow the arp has a faster decay than the piano but maybe a staccato arp notes 
Um, if you group together the, the similar type of decay, then it's going to be instruments that, that work well together. So you, you, if you got, if you got, for example, uh, yeah, like ARP, low strings pizzicato, and piano, it's a very common combination. Um, piano and celesta, very common combination as well. Um, so mid, mid fix type of decay, tubular rail, celesta, crotons, microphone, All right. So that's another way of thinking about how to group instruments together. And then the last, the last thing is the emotion. If you know that there are, um, and th but this, this is very, it depends on the context very much as well. But if let's say that you've got instruments that you know that for, cre sorry, for creating like a positive emotion, right? If you've got, uh, let's say, consordino strings in the mid-register uh, major chords. I don't know if I have it loaded. Um, yeah, I do. All right, so that's that. Um, and the, maybe the woodwinds, but mo more like clarinets, let me see. Clarinets and bassoons. So like woodwinds meet register major chords, soft notes um, in a, in a homogeneous type of orchestration. I said homophonic first when I compared homogeneous and heterogeneous and I, I, I meant um, I meant homogeneous, not homophonic, sorry. Um, so we'll talk about this later, but the the type of sound, the three orchestral sections, the string section is the most homogeneous one. And then we've got brass and then woods. The woodwinds uh, each instrument sounds very different. So depending on how we voice the chord with the woodwinds, it's going to sound more homogeneous or more heterogeneous. Okay, more like it's harder to differentiate what the different instruments are in there, more homogeneous or more heterogeneous. Depending on how you voice it, it's going to be easier to hear the flutes and the oboes and the clarinets. Okay, so basically it's like when you when the, the more overlapping that there is, like if the if the flutes and clarinets are doing the same notes or the flutes and oboes are doing the same notes, uh, then it's going to sound more homogeneous. And if, and, and if there's, and if you place them like this, instead of like overlapping, inter interleaving the notes, it's going to create a more heterogeneous sound. So what that means to me is that I have some woodwinds, um, voicing the woodwinds, it, 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 it takes time. And sometimes I do it, um, you know, I voice every woodwind instrument, but when I need a fast result, I have a woodwind ensemble patch, and it's completely fine. But I know that I have some patches from some libraries that sound more heterogeneous, and some others that sound more homogeneous. And sometimes I have the ability to transition from a more homogeneous sound to a more heterogeneous sound, okay? So we'll talk about that. These are the things that are going to make you work fast. Um, and, but we, we will get there at the end of the course. Um, so I know that if I voice the woodwinds in a way that's sounds more homogeneous, and I've got like a mid mid low woodwind section playing performing major soft major chords like the like mezzo piano to mezzo forte, and um, and um, consortino strings. I don't know if they share more things in common, like these things that we talked about, but in terms of emotion, I know that they can create a, a similar type of emotion, right? Um, and so if I put them together, they're gonna go well together. That's, that's what this last one means here. So like if I do this, let's start with the, it's gonna work very, very fast if I move this. Sorry, maybe here. This here so you can see. Ah. 
And if I do the same thing with woods, I'm just gonna just to move fast. J, copy paste, copy paste, and I'm gonna get rid of the dynamics. That we're gonna re-record dynamics. And then I'll activate this guy here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna now record the I'm gonna select this guy and this guy. And then make sure that I've got selected the woodwinds. It's got the same name because I just copied and pasted. Yeah, but this is the woodwinds. controlling this button. I wouldn't have to do this, but um, all groups and modulator. CC. We'll talk about this later in the class. Or you won't have to do this because your template's already already done this. This patch that you're seeing here is uh, this. This is not exactly your template. I just opened an old session. Um, these patches you is a ver like the legacy, legacy, legacy version of Albion. This is version one. Version one. This is the one. That <laughs> this is the very version. I I have both versions. The, the very very first version they released that I loved, and then the the, the modern one, the one that that you can buy. The all right, let me just get this done super quick. So you're like, what is this? Well, this is the old Albion. Sorry, um, um, amplifier, modulator, here, um, here, here, minus one. All right, now we're trying. Now I have control over this. Boom. Select both in. Ah. So that's woodwinds. And these are the strings. Similar dynamics same notes so they go well together because they create because i know that if i use them the specific way if i voice them the specific way if it's this range if it's this chord and all that they can create a similar emotion and that's what i'm doing i'm using this that's what they share in common and so that's what i'm creating this doubling and i'm choosing these instruments all right cool more all right so steps I, I like to I like to put the step by step as um, when I when I can. Heterogeneous, yeah, I didn't catch it myself. Yeah, heterogeneous, heterogeneous. <laughs> I don't know. I uh, I said oh. I'm sorry. Music is my thing. Speaking. <laughs> All right, homogeneous, heterogeneous. Hopefully, this is the I'm trying. I'm pronouncing it correctly. All right. So step by step, select the instruments for sp for the specific layer. Let's say melody, and then decide what you need for that layer. What has the, what is the outcome, right? Why do I need to double? If so, right? You have to have a reason why you. It's uh, it needs more weight. It needs more definition. It needs to sound wider. It needs to sound bigger. It needs to sound lower. It needs to have more punch. It needs to, right? All these things. Like, why am I doubling? Why am I adding? So I've got this. I've got this. This line is doing something like this. Right. So I've got this. Right. Like transformers. Steve Jablonski, Hans Zimmer type of lower string sound. I'm gonna add more stuff on, on top of this. It's like, why? why? Why do I need? Well, maybe I need to enhance the low end. All right. Let me just, I know that, that you can see this one second. Ah. 
to record this. What do I need here? Do I need, do I need brass? And why would I need brass? It's like, why do I need brass if I need brass? Well, if I, if I, if I want it a little bit more, sound a little bit more aggressive, Maybe I could add the brass, but I don't think I need brass, maybe for that specific sound that I'm after. Maybe, sorry, I can add brass to the first hit. Yeah. It's too too big of a brass section, but anyway. Yeah, I could do something like this, and it's just enhancing some of the hits. That that might you know if if the outcome if what I want to get is that. All right, that that could be an option. I don't think so. Maybe I want to extend the low end. Maybe I want to extend the low end. Maybe I don't want to repeat the, the same notes because the, the double basses don't have that much definition. Maybe I want to create, a, I want to have a little bit more of definition. Then, well, maybe. Let me just quantize this real quick because it's going to make it easier for me. Take it So if I want to add a little bit more definition, then maybe I can have uh, some bassoons there. They add a little bit more of more of the finishing. Um, so so that's that. Okay. So choose the decide what is what you need for that layer. Then select what doubling option you're gonna use, and then select the right instrument that you're gonna double with. So why doubling? Because it it it, it increases the doubling is why doubling. Well, it's based on the outcome what you need, but it basically increases the orchestral palette, which creates new colors. Maybe one of the outcomes could be you know expand color that I didn't mention. Um, now, too much doubling is going to create the opposite effect. Like too much doubling all the time. Like having the entire orchestra doing you know like like you know the the, the hands in like. Well, Hans Zimmer is not always the same, right? It's got it's got so many different sounds. But if we think like the parts of the Caribbean type of Hans Zimmer, like everyone, everyone playing the melody, right? <laughs> that sound is nice, but if you keep using it over and over again, then uh, it gets monotonous. That's what. So, so too much doubling, it creates the opposite effect. Yes, you have like the big homophonic orchestral type of sound. But for a while, then if you don't change and you go to another texture or another color, then it gets it gets boring. So it reduces the color change effect. It's fine, but keep it in mind. All right. Uh, I just put here uh, some that I like: double bass, double bass, piano, harp, trombone, bassoon, typical full orchestral bass. Um, pianos extreme ranges is very useful to enhance and extend the orchestral range because the piano, in fact, has a it's a bigger range than the orchestra. So so they're like the staccato piano. Like, let me see if I have it loaded here. I think I do. See? Why 
obviously not crap. But if you had something like Oh, um, anyway, triplets, cancel, piano, piano. A very dry, very short nose type of piano. And sometimes what works really, really well is like muted, like, like when you put um, the hand on the notes, on the strings of the piano, that you get a sound like, I think I have it somewhere. Let me just load it real quick. opening or saving, I don't know what, what it's doing, yeah. Uh, if I go here, and I go here, and I go, Albion, uh, Legacy, and then Individual Patches, Piano, Short Mute, yes, I do have it. Yeah, that's it. What did I do? This, this is, is mapped here, but it really sounds low. It's it, the sound is of a lower key. So. And uh, let me just do this one more time. Or at the end. a little bit louder like this to so these things anyway so the piano a uh, flute or woodwinds with arp accompaniment flutes with the strings this is a, a more typical one just to add a little a little bit of that flute sound to the high strings or strings uh, in octaves here like and then flutes and piccolo up and up to here to add a little bit of brightness Stuff like that. Uh, strings here and having the woodwinds doubling to add definition. Um, violas and clarinets for the violas will add uh, violas and clarinets. The violas will add some warmth to this strings sound. Um, cellos and bassoons. The bassoons are going to add definition or, or just a solo bassoon. Double basses and contra bassoons. And then we've got all the brass. The brass adds energy and epicness um, and seriousness. And then we've got the, the percussion. Percussion is going to add a punch and definition. So staccato strings and snare. Um, esta, uh, low staccato strings and timpani. Um, low staccato strings and taikos, like big epic percussion type of thing. All right. So we'll, we'll, we'll get to talk about that as we, as we cover each style. But here's the thing. Uh, these are the basics. And so far, I don't know if you've got any questions, but, um, but so far, um, this like it's good to know it's important but it's hard to piece it together so it creates the type of out musical outcome that you are after right so as we go style by, by style it's like these are the things that you have to put together harmonically melodically orchestration and all that so you get that sound and um, and um, that's uh, to me it's a much easier way to learn music because at the end of the day uh, when we are trying to achieve something musically, it's not about the things that you put in the mix, it's about the things that you don't put in the mix. It's about the things that you do, not about the... Sorry, it's about the things that you don't do musically. It's not about the things that you do. Because we can... It's, uh, usually we will sit down and we'll start... It's, it's either um, you're going to use pencil and paper or you're going to... or you're going to improvise on the piano. And usually you will start doing things that you feel comfortable with and that's sometimes not the style that that that, that you know, these things that you are doing do, do not create the style that you are trying to create or the musical outcome that you are after and so it's about knowing what things not to do even the ones that you feel comfortable doing so boom it's a, it's about music you know composition it's more about shaping and getting rid of things so the things that are left create the musical effect that you want rather than adding and adding and adding. Um, adding creates complexity and it's hard to deal with complexity both musically and, uh, and then in terms of production later on as well. All right, so the art is on what things make the difference.
All right, that's it. That was awesome, wasn't it? This is the end of NTCM Live. Thanks for attending. I'll see you next year. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. No, it was fantastic. This is the end of the first week, like the classes, the intense classes. And then we're going to have the Q&A tomorrow with Alex, Tony, and I. It's going to be live. It's going to be on Zoom. Stay tuned on the email. You'll receive the, um, the Zoom link if you haven't received it already. But th that's it. I will see you tomorrow. Make sure to bring your composing, orchestration, and music questions written down so you can ask them. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm very excited to meet you in person tomorrow. Thanks for attending these past four days.